right, considering it's likely never been cleaned, it's not that bad. <laughs> this thing looks awful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this spark plug is in real bad shape. You guys gotta look at this. What's up, Buck Double Dini in the garage? Today we are talking tune-ups. I get the question all the time. Hey man, my four liter, my four seven is running rough or I wanna get more power out of it or I wanna get better miles per gallon out of it, what can I do? And um, what, what people are looking for when they ask me that question is bolt-on mods, this, that, or the third. But in reality, uh, these engines tend to get neglected, both the 4.7 in the WJ and definitely the 4 liter. People hear about how they're bulletproof and they say, all right, well, that means I don't have to do any maintenance on the darn thing. Uh, that's not true at all. So a real simple, old school tune-up is going to go a real long way uh, to getting your Jeep getting better miles per gallon, better power. Um, and just generally getting better life out of the thing, you know? It's gonna last a whole lot longer if you take care of the darn thing. <clears throat> so today, we're gonna pop off the um, uh, air system here so that we can get to the throttle body. We're gonna clean the throttle body. We're gonna clean the throttle body sensors. We are going to put new spark plugs in. This is something that us Jeep owners are notorious for neglecting. We're not tuner guys. We're more worried about what size tires we can fit under the Jeep than what condition the motor's in. And as a result, <clears throat> there's a lot of Grand Cherokees and Cherokees out there just generally <laughs> running rough, you know, and uh, totally avoidable. So that's what we're gonna do today. So the first stop on our tour is going to be our air filter. As you can see, mine is plenty dirty. Additionally, there's uh, junk and acorns and stuff. Looks like a squirrel was having a meal down in my uh, air cleaner box here. So you can go ahead and buy a new one, you can get a K&N, or you can just blow yours out. This one's got a little life left in it, I'm gonna blow it out, I'm gonna get the junk out of here. That should be step one, that's day one stuff. Anybody who's ever worked on a car knows, you need to keep your air filter clean. Now our second stop here is going to be this throttle body. We're gonna disconnect all the sensors. We're gonna disconnect this vacuum hose. We're gonna remove our throttle linkage so that we can pop this throttle body off. Now it's uh, always ill-advised to leave a gaping hole into your engine, so we're just gonna put some rags in there to make sure we don't get any dust, debris, tools, spare part parts, meesey mice, anything else down up in the engine. Let's take this throttle body over to the bench, take a look at her. All right, now the first thing we're gonna do is get this thing broken down a little bit more. We'll remove the idle air controller here. We can examine this thing and <laughs> this thing looks awful. All right, now I've definitely been running a little rough and my idle's been bouncing around a little bit. This would absolutely have something to do with it. Look at all that carbon. So we're gonna put this aside and when we clean this up, we'll clean that too. Now let's remove the TPS sensor. If you've ever messed with Jeeps ever in your life, you know that the TPS is often uh, something that haunts us. You go through a little puddle, you get some water on your TPS, all of a sudden your transmission's shifting funny. Uh, it's a huge problem on the 4 liter. To my knowledge, it's not as big a problem on the 4.7, but oh boy. Now, this Jeep is 18 years old. It's got 125,000 miles. I can tell by how tight these screws are that no one's ever cleaned this throttle body. So this is 18 years worth of junk, 120,000 miles worth of junk. Now there's nothing to really clean on your TPS since you just sort of put this one aside. Now we're looking at this thing, it's actually not that bad, but it definitely does need to be cleaned. All right, considering it's likely never been cleaned, it's not that bad, but cleaning this out will help uh, throttle response, can help everything run real nice. We're gonna get some brake cleaner, we're gonna go out into a well-ventilated area, we're gonna get her done. All right, now you're gonna wanna get yourself a few things to uh, clean this up. First off, obviously you're gonna need some kind of cleaner, carbon choke cleaner will work, uh, brake parts cleaner, brake clean, whatever's cheap, man, don't, don't kill yourself over that. Get yourself a brass brush, not a steel brush, a brass brush. You don't wanna go scoring this stuff up. Nice little brass brush. Um, will help you break up this carbon without uh, affecting the parts themselves. Whole pile of shop rags, some safety glasses. Some people like to use gloves. Uh, yeah, I agree. This stuff is pretty nasty on your hands, but uh, I don't wear gloves, so it is what it is. Safety glasses at the least, though. What we're going to do is intermittently spray stuff down, scrub it up, wipe it down until you have um, your throttle body, butterfly valve, and... Um, Idle air controller, totally clean. Be careful of stuff like this. This is a rubber O-ring down here. 
Brake parts cleaner destroys rubber. We all know this. Be nice and careful. All right, let's get to it. Everything is much cleaner now, like new. Uh, you will have noticed I did take the O-ring off the idle air controller so that I didn't get brake clean on it, and then I dropped it right in the brake clean, so whatever. Uncle Jerry at his finest. We're going to put this throttle body back together, then we're going to get it back on the Jeep, and then we're going to do the spark plugs. This idle air controller has to go a certain way, so make sure you're putting it the right way. You can screw it on in either direction, but then the plug will be backwards. Now, this is obviously for a Jeep 4.7. This is going to be the same for your 4 liter, but it's really going to be the same for any engine, man. Just take your throttle body off. Every throttle body has some amount of sensors, whether it's got uh, throttle positioning sensors, idle air controllers, mass airflow sensors, uh, manifold, manifold actual pressure uh, sensors. Take them off. If they can be cleaned, clean them. Make sure they're in good shape. Now, the same thing with this. TPS, it has to go a certain way, I believe. Yep, we got it oriented right. Get these back together. All right, we can remove our rags from our intake. Take our fresh, clean throttle body. Oh, get it lined up here. Get some bolts. Now, I wouldn't snug them down with an impact like that. I was just running the threads in. Plug in our sensors and our vacuum line, and we will reattach our linkage. There we go, and there you go. Now you could stop there, but I wouldn't recommend it. What we're going to do now is change all of the spark plugs one by one. So Grab our, what are these, 10 millimeter? Of course they are. All right, these are relatively straightforward. We're gonna disconnect our coal pack. Break this guy loose. Oh my God. Then we're gonna drop our nut like a total amateur. <laughs> Where did that go? Oh man, come on. Oh boy. Wow, that thing disappeared. There it is. Got him. All right, we're gonna be more careful of that in the future. Okay. Now the gap for these spark plugs is supposed to be 0 0.04 inches. The gap wears away over time, so how far off your spark plug is from that gap can tell you how old the spark plugs are. And I suspect these are going to be way far away from where they ought to be. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this spark plug is in real bad shape. You guys got to look at this. All right, what we have here is the spark plug I just pulled out of that Jeep. <laughs> this is possibly the worst spark plug I've ever seen. Uh, first off, it is gapped to about... Jesus, <laughs> about <laughs> 80 thou, which um, is double what the gap should be. And you can tell uh, this white all over the tip is uh, indicative of an overheated spark plug, which could mean a lot of things. But in this case, I'm guessing the overheating is from how uh, badly worn out this plug is. Could be any number of things with the engine. Um, once we put the new plugs in, I might be able to tell if there's something else wrong with the motor causing the overheating. Um, but in this case, I think it's just these are crazy worn out. For all I know, these are like the original plugs champion. I mean, these are the OEM plugs. They were way out. I've owned this Jeep for about six months. I should have done these plugs a long time ago. Um, whenever you get new plugs, you're going to want to make sure you gap them. These are supposed to be right at 40. 
Uh, this one's just a little bit high. It's at about 45. I don't know if you can see that. So what we're going to do is take this and gently push it down just a little bit. Uh, I need to go a little more. You never want to bang on a plug. I know a lot of people that'll put this in a vise and just tap it with something. Don't do not do that. <laughs> I'm a monkey with a toolbox and even I know that. Uh, just work it until you get it right where it needs to be. Getting close. All right, now I went just a little bit too far. That's what this hole on the other side is for. So that we can pry it back just a little bit. Perfect, right at 0 0.040 inches. You probably can't see that because of the glare, but take my word for it. I'm gonna go throw this in, then I'm gonna do eight more. Then we're gonna start the Jeep up and uh, see how she runs. All right, just pulled another one out and it's just as bad, if not worse, than the first one. So I'm relatively confident there's nothing wrong with any specific cylinder. There's nothing wrong with the engine as a whole other than this is uh, epic levels of neglect. Uh, previous owner is guilty. I am also guilty for owning this thing for six months and never getting around the plugs. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is it was running fine before, so it's going to be running great now that I get good plugs in. Number three, and it just keeps getting better. <laughs> um, it's actually comforting that they're all this bad. It means there's no one cylinder that's um, got anything wrong with it. The whole engine is just suffering from epic levels of neglect, as previously stated. And not that we expected anything different, but there you go. This one might be the worst yet. The electrode's completely gone. So basically, I'm just a complete hack. Um, so here's what we're going to do. I'm not going to bother filming the second bank. I'm just going to go ahead and do that ourselves. Um, I think you guys get the general idea. You will notice I have not been using dielectric grease. What that is is a grease that you put up on here. It helps to prevent the um, coil pack from seizing on here. It also helps get a good connection. Uh, usually I would recommend that, but I don't have any today. That's really the only reason I'm not using it. So if you're going to do this tune-up, go ahead and get yourself some dielectric grease. I'm going to get the other, well, the rest of this one and the other side done, and then we'll come back in for a little wrap it up. Alrighty friends, this is all buttoned up now. Um, everything's put back together. We're gonna go ahead and give her a start and see if she's running better than she was. I guess we'll get our tools out of here first. Alrighty, please excuse my uh, exhaust leak. That's next on the list. I can tell you definitely idling better. Uh, throttle response felt better just flicking the valve there. With the new plugs and cleaning out the throttle sensors there, I should be getting slightly better miles per gallon, though. If you're trying to get good MPG out of a 20-year-old American V8, <laughs> you're a freaking idiot. So <laughs> I'm not worried about miles per gallon, but logically it should be there. So uh, this is what I'm going to call Grandpa's Tune-Up. Just your old school, real simple tune-up that I think a lot of people neglect these days. Uh, they want a simple answer, they want some kind of bolt-on mod, they want some kind of computer reflash this solution, and at the end of the day, sometimes you just need to get your hands dirty and clean up some things uh, in your engine there. Throttle body makes a huge difference, especially on these Jeeps, especially if you have the 4 liter, uh, but on all other engines too, man. So if you've got any questions, by all means, let me comment down there in the squawk box. Let us know what you think. If you like the video, by all means, like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, consider checking us out on Patreon, Etsy, and Teespring. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.